Okay, here we are on the second video. Uh, I left uh, kind of a cliffhanger there. Like, okay, we've plotted these points. What's going on here? We have some interesting behavior that's uh, seemingly different. We have 111 fan coil units. This is the dischar discharge air temperature, probably after the coil on the fan. Uh, what's going on here? We have these, uh, a couple of units it looks like that are having discharge air temperatures much, much higher. Uh, looks like above 120 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So what's up? What's up with this? Is this is this is this thing broken? Uh, is it is it operating differently? Maybe it has a different type of uh, control or cooling coil uh, sort of configuration or heating coil, perhaps. Mm, that might be interesting. Um, that's actually my guess. I think that these units probably have a different configuration, um, a different type of system in here. Um, maybe a, a heating coil uh, as opposed to some of these others not having heating coils. Um, but that's just a hypothesis. That's just a guess why that's happening. Um, but you, you'll also see other behavior here. If you were to zoom in, you can see um, some of the units are, are cycling uh, very consistently between cooler and warm or warmer discharge air temperatures. Um, you can see little patterns. Some of them have patterns, some of them don't have patterns. So this is, this is part of the exploration data, the exploration part of your data analysis is capturing what is real data from a real building look like and what kind of techniques could we possibly use to analyze this? So if, if I'm, you know, I'm thinking out loud here, maybe uh, I would create some sort of um, model-based method to uh, detect the fan coil units that have um, cooling coils and heating coils together or the units that are in sort of some sort of operating mode and then create a tag and sort of classify these time series according to those type of operations. That might be interesting because maybe you won't, you can't tell from the BMS data set those type of specific metadata about the equipment, let's say. And identifying that type of metadata might be very interesting because maybe you want to create some sort of um, program where you offer incentives for uh, building owners that have lots of fan coil units that have uh, reheat coils or something that, you know, and, and you want to offer an incentive to convert those into a different control strategy or implement a new piece of equipment or things like that. These are the type of programs that utilities are really interested in um, that make a very scalable impact, let's say. Uh, so, you know, that's just off thinking out loud. That's off the top of my head. Uh, you can come up with your own ideas, but but this is kind of the process of, of, of playing around with the data, exploring it, and coming up with high, like a hypothesis about what kind of advanced technique could be used uh, for that. So once we look at this high-level behavior, let's dive into some more, you know, sort of like dive into those units. Um, so it looks like there's, um, in building 354, there's a couple of sensors, uh, the ones that I think we're, we're looking at now, which have... Um, higher discharge air temperatures than the others. So if we use some of our Python code to kind of dive into that, we can we can get that information from that particular building. Um, and here we're looking at okay, what what is the you know what what's the behavior happening here? Actually, that's in it's in New York City or New York, sorry, not New York City, New York in general. That be, the weird behavior we're seeing is in the winter. That's why I mean I kind of jumped to the conclusion I probably should have made some suspense there but uh you know basically that that's the, why we came to the conclusion possibly that these are some sort of heating type system or reheat system and so here uh we've we've dove into building three four three five four just the fan coil units from that building you can see here that you were once we're diving in deeper we can see the behavior more clearly and up close so kind of zooming in on that behavior um, there are three, these three points which we are seeing are very specifically um, sort of warmer discharge air temperatures, or not even warm, like hot discharge air temperatures. Um, and we want to get a sense of what that behavior is in aggregate. So here you can see a couple points, uh, chunks of code where we're diving into that a bit deeper. Maybe we want to create like a box plot to see. So these for these three uh, particular units, you're seeing this kind of behavior across the range, the time range that we're seeing. We're seeing that this unit, uh, fan coin unit 223059, you know, it's, it's, its mean is, is 90 degrees Fahrenheit and it's got a range between 130 and, and 90 across that time frame. So this is, a, this is an anomalous unit in a sense. Is it, is it bad behavior? Is it, um, in a, like, is it a, a fault? Probably not, maybe, but probably not. You can't accidentally get to temperatures of 140 degrees unless you have a certain type of uh, heating coil. 
Uh, so, so this is probably more of an aspect aspect of not finding uh, bad behavior or, or uh, low performance data, but f like being able to capture that this is a certain type of unit in a sense. And so there are different models that, that I could build and try to predict this type of metadata about this piece of equipment. Um, those models could also be useful for anomaly detection to find bad behavior that's wasteful behavior, let's say. But yeah, so this is this is one way of, of going down that uh, rabbit hole in a sense. Um, there are other types of plots, the line charts, of course, we can look at these line charts um, that are reflecting what we're seeing in the heat maps. <clears throat> and we really see like a behavior change um, here in uh, April, May. So of course, those of you that live in uh, climates like this know that that's when springtime hits, it gets warmer, we don't need heating quite as much. So kind of confirms our hypothesis that that's what's happening. Um, the, the plot we had is a bit noisy. So maybe we want to use um, resampling to uh, smooth that out a bit. So here we have uh, daily data. Um, and you can really see that behavior without so much of the noise. And um, and we and yeah, like this is probably seasonal behavior. So we can actually split the data um, and look at the data in, in the context of um, uh, well, we're look, now we're looking at the point IDs to dive in point IDs to dive into the metadata behind these three points. And we can see, yeah, actually in the description, we can actually see um, that there is a certain type of units actually. So uh, the two units which are um, uh, having the higher temperatures are actually called CUH units instead of FCU. What is a CUH unit? Hmm, we can Google that. In fact, it's CUH unit is a Cabot union, unit heater. So, okay, so maybe we could have detected that from the point names, but this point was, was classified as a FANCO unit. Um, but you, you know, like these labels are not perfect, right? They're not always perfect. Uh, there is possible um, simplification of labels and human error sometimes. So, so finding, you know, using the time series data to, to, to really extract uh, the metadata in a, in a better way um, is, is what we kind of stumbled across in this example. And this was really exploration of a very, we just randomly took up some points and we randomly kind of plotted them and looked through them. You're gonna find this type of behavior no matter where you look, you're gonna see this interesting behavior. And your goal in this hackathon or, or you know, could be your goal is to be able to extract these kind of behavior in a, in a uh, easy automated way. This is my hypothesis. This is what, how I would approach it. Like I said, I'm not gonna be in this competition at all. So feel free to take my idea and run with it if you want. But you know, there's tons of other directions you could head in, which I'll talk about in the next video. Um, you can also do multivariate ex exploration. So we, we also downloaded the command signal. So we wanted to compare the command and the discharge air temperature signals. Um, we could uh, plot them next to each other in in a plot like this, which is called a strip plot, which kind of sees, it kind of shows the behavior uh, between, let's say the discharge air temperature between when the unit is being commanded to be on versus versus off. So, um, you know, here is uh, a strip plot which shows that. So when your command is zero, the, the system's supposed to be off. When it's uh, one, this is the fan cool unit is on. So you can see there's a big difference in the cluster of these points um, in the strip plot. So when the unit is on, it's generally uh, cooler because most of these units are actually in cooling mode. But you can also see uh, here some points right down here that are the unit is technically off, but it looks like the discharge temperature is, is a bit lower than maybe it should be. So maybe the unit is actually running, but it's not actually on. So that's kind of like maybe a fault detection opportunity, possibly, not really sure. You can dive into that. Um, these strip plots are kind of cool at, at sort of, um, you know, diving into uh, these maybe possible correlations. Um, and Bianca, who developed this, is saying, you know, it's, it's evident that there is clusters around 70, 95, and 110. Um, and, and if you zoom in, um, which I think we're doing here, we're, sorry, we're looking at a different uh, unit perhaps. Anyway, the clusters become more obvious uh, between on and off between the fan coil units. So anyway, you can, you can check this out and, and, and 
sort of like dive into exactly what's going on here. And, and but like I said, the whole point of this uh, you know video is really to talk about like how this process of finding things and, and understanding how to, to tackle them. So the next, so so these are this is kind of a very simple example, basically something to get you started, get your brain flowing. Where do I start? Well, first thing is to really explore data and come up with these hypotheses and, and understand what you might want to do. Um, the other way is to find a concept you want to do and then look at the data and see how it fits in that context. So it's kind of more bottom up versus top down kind of thinking. I think if you have a team, you got your team is going to kind of look at it from both directions. Possibly, there's no right or wrong way of doing it. There's really the end result, which is your submission. And so, finding and, and developing your and iterating on your solution is going to be something that you're going to want to do over the next month uh, until the end of the competition. So. Uh, in the next video, I want to dive into uh, a kind of a mind map of the concepts that are out there based on a publication uh, from last year.